Good morning, everybody. And my name is Fajobi Tululok Maritayo. I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Sociology and Anthropology, Obafemi Aolo University, Lefe, Nigeria. Uh, I want to appreciate the organizer for the opportunity to travel down here and um, the uh, Mr. Henry has been communicating with me during the time of my coming down here. I really want to appreciate him also. Then to talk further, um, my work, I'm working on assessing sustainability of Sino Nigeria partnership in the railway subsector in Nigeria. And going further, it's showing about the the, the current, the previous railway system in Nigeria and the current one that is being done, the state of the railway is the one down, downstairs that is being done in Nigeria. Then, and going for my, my introduction, I, uh, my coming down here, when I was coming down here, I have to have a stop in Dubai. So I see a lot of people a lot of people communicating, sharing ideas, business transaction, especially in, in Dubai. And, and coming down here, during the time that we were at the uh, French consulate, I have a kind of very great discussion with a lot of great people about sharing of ideas, about work they are doing. And also, during the time I was in the transit before I got down there, I, have, I saw some kind of level of development, improvement, sharing of uh, business transaction. And what now, what, I, what now came to my mind that all these things was made possible because of what? Transportation. And going further, looking and being specific about my work, Nigeria is a country uh, 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 with over 200 million, over 200 million people that is vast, that is vast um, with, um, that, uh, with uh, arable and vast landmass. But the country has not enjoyed consistent, uh, qualitative economic growth since the time it has um, 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 regained uh, independence from the colonial. And this is as a this is as a result of uh, this is a consequence of poor uh, uh, transport infrastructure, poor management of transport infrastru infrastructure. And it was affirmed that. Um, uh, and, uh, lack of uh, and transport infrastructure uh, in Nigeria has been the major reason for prevailing poverty and unemployment rate, high unemployment rate in Nigeria, and which has been more dominant in uh, the, the, the rural and the urban community. And all these, all these people, all these issues, the, the trade, the transaction, all rely on the transportation. Uh, 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 infrastructure in, 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 in this area. Now, talking um, further, I, I, on the next slide, I say contextualization of China really interest in Nigerian transportation sec uh, subsector imply unconditional aid partnership. So the, the and China, and China renew interest in Nigerian transportation subsector can be viewed as a diversion away from the uh, Western uh, mode of conditional relation to unconditional aid partnership with Nigeria on uh, and on what I I, uh, I term sino globalized globalism that is a world defining economic relation through partnership model. And this implies assume unconditional aid relationship uh, with no political string attached on any economic activity transaction with their partner by investing where the West were not willing to invest, especially in the Nigerian transport sector. And China, the Chinese, the Chinese has been involved actively in Nigerian uh, transport uh, sector for a more than three decades, and especially in the railway construction. And notably, uh, be, and to be specific, in the railway subsector, there has been a lot of projects ongoing in Nigeria. One of it is about the Lagos, uh, Ibadan Kano standard gauge, and Lagos 
Calabar Coastal Rail Line and, and Port Harcourt Maduguri uh, uh, Standard Gauge Line and also the Abuja um, uh, Kaduna uh, Standard Gauge Line. And of all these projects that has been done involved by Chinese in Nigeria, is only the Abuja Kaduna Standard Gauge Line that is, that is uh, uh, completed and in operation. And, but the big, the big project, which is the Lego, Lagos Chicano project, uh, is still yet because it has, it has been, they have been on, on it, they have been on it for the past three years, which is have not been completed. It has still been on it, and there has been a, a kind of, a kind of, uh, uh, um, a, a concern from the stakeholder, from the public, from the youth, from the uh, opposition people about for what and on what, uh, for what will the uh, the Sino-Nigeria partnership, what what will it be, be bring to Nigeria, and on what will China benefit from this cooperation. And incidentally, the long neglect of the railway subsector in Nigeria has led to um, uh, the railway transport infrastructure, which was designed by the West in the past. And the level of this neglect uh, due to lack of funding and expertise in the subsector that had major business and movement along the road transport. And this has caused a lot of uh, a fatal accident, a kind of overstretch. And these are the thing, these are one of the examples that happened in Lagos whereby close to about 100 people lost their lives based on the explosion of a tanker fuel that was moving along the Lagos Ibadan Express Road. And as I was coming, I was looking at it from the, from the news again that there was an explosion in middle bed of Nigeria, which is the Benue state, whereby 44 people lost their life because the road was overstretched. And this now led the Nigerian government to clamor for investment and, and support from China to revive the Moribund Railway uh, infrastructure in the country in order to ease the dependency on the road. And notably, and notably, the, uh, the, the, the China Active South uh, uh, Partnership embarked upon by in 2000, in 2000 which, uh, which was designed through FOCA, and that one is to, uh, strength, uh, is to support African, to boost the social and economic development of African states, uh, pledged about 60 billion to Africa. And most of all, that money was uh, fulfilled in 2018, whereby Nigeria was one of the beneficiaries with $5 billion. Although a lot of criticism come with it that maybe Africa has sold the, uh, the African, uh, they have sold African to uh, the Chinese. But I can remember the uh, South African president make, uh, make a comment that no, it's just about the partnership. But, the question about that, uh, the, the one that come about is about the, the, the funding that it was given to Nigeria showed that Nigeria lacked the will, the enable capacity to fund the, the, the project independently. And, and it, it showed the inability of Nigeria to effectively fund and maintain a railway infrastructure project when completed in the, in the country. And there has been a kind of a, 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 a problem associated with the maintenance capability and the adap uh, adaptation of the skill in green in the ongoing railway projects. So there has been a kind of concern. So a critical concern has been on the long-term effect of this partnership toward sustainable sustainability of this railway infrastructural development in Nigeria and the implication of the partnership to indigenous trade movement and enhancement of livelihood for citizens in the country. Because the government was trying to invest in this railway because of the unemployment, about to diversify the economy, to link each of the states from the south to the north. Because it not is a, is, a, is a place with a very large mass, whereby a large number of youth cluster down in the, in the south. And they believe that if the railway is being networked, if, being in, if they can interlink, it will make this the youth that are not engaged to be engaged in all the area in the country. But critical concern has been on it. How is it going to fulfill all these promises? Then, that's, I then the, the, in, in conclusion, however, if the ongoing social content of social Nigerian relations is more of partnership, 
what will be the fate of the country in terms of sustaining the ongoing railway project if there are conflicts of interest between the two countries because there is bound to be any conflict because the, 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 the projects were really financed by the Chinese. And according to the report that was made available to me by my, my, my school and my study, we discovered that 90% of this fund, of this money that is being invested was from the Chinese, whereby the remaining percentage was from the, gov the Nigerian government. So if there is any conflict of interest, how is Nigerian going to maintain? Because it's a huge and ultra-modern project, which historically, a, a project like this has started in the 70s, where the Romanians they started it, they abandoned it based on the lack of funding and expert. And then the Indians started it also, they abandoned it. Then during the time of the military era, they abandoned it. And until the democratic uh, dispensation during in the 2000 before, they were able to reach this, this level. So these are the problem. I see then my, my study focused on examining this extent of potential skill transfer in Sino-Nigerian Rail Transport Partnership to indigenous people in the country. Then it explored the point, potential point of conflict in the Sino-Nigerian Railway Transport Partnership vis-a-vis -vis the host community. Then lastly, it assessed the Nigerian policy intent towards sustainable adaptation of Chinese intervention in the railway subsector. And in the review, it's, most scholars agree that Nigerian and China, China have a, a lot in common, especially in the area of ethnic diversity and then rich natural endowment of natural resources and human resources, and both are largest, uh, largest market in the world for China and for, for Africa, for Nigeria. But in terms of endowment of resources and natural resources, and China has been able to utilize it for its own development of its country, unlike Nigeria, which is still grappling with about how to manage its own geographical dividends that is in that is domicile in the country. Then going further, then there is a sharp difference in the outcome of bilateral trade and the level of development between China and Nigeria in terms of technology and experience. So this shows that the increasing trade imbalances between this Nigeria and, and China were viewed as detrimental to, the, uh, to Nigeria. Then in terms of trade always uh, favor China more than the Nigeria. Then in the, in the review also, the China investment in Nigeria focuses mainly on infrastructural development, communication, technology, road, and construction. And this can be seen. And in almost about 80 billion naira has been, a billion dollars has been invested into uh, in infrastructure, into project investment in Nigeria over time then. Then going forward in my literature, then technology transfer to host community and less developed recipient economy, especially in Nigeria, in Nigeria uh, from Chinese event, were quite limited. And this can be seen in the, in, the, in, the, in the area of language barrier. And also this key, according to the scholar and the literature that we review, it was shown that the, 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 the skill that was later shown to the people were not in line with the work to sustain the project that is on, on ground. And also, there was a, 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 a kind of lead to concentration for local community in terms of job uh, uh, opportunity in the project. And then the, the, the railway project will enhance economic and indirect social benefit of connectivity, but they will also entail security risks, especially lack of integration of local community because Nigerian government has been trying enough to make sure that everything was in order when the railway was connected, like all these security challenges like Boko Haram, S-Men, they have put security in place. And that's why they were trying to interlink each, each of the uh, states. But the, it was affirmed from the literature that there is, may be a problem because the local community, if they are not act, actively in, uh, integrated into the project, there is going to be. An example is the, the, the one in Kenya, whereby the, uh, the, the Chinese constructed uh, the, uh, a project, a railway project there, whereby the local community was not given adequate consideration, and that caused a lot of uh, security 
challenges in that uh, re in that area. Then the last one that uh, that was a weak policy intent due to Nigerian government as the sole railway operator and owner supplying all rail infrastructure infrastructure and service because the Nigerian Railway Corporation is still the one in charge of the railway and it, it, there is a been, there has been a level of a, a, a allegation against the corporation about ma effective management of the railway. So, but the Nigerian government are not putting more effort in, in, in developing the um, uh, um, private uh, sector in the country. Then going further, in order not to waste our time, the theory I used in globalization theory and sustainable development theory and globalization theory. And the, the, the two, what I said that it's just, it's, the one is talking about inclusive growth and indigenization must be considered to generate sustainable outcome. And then the globalization, in order, then going further to my methodology, it's, it was conducted in Lagos and Oyo State. And the two states are strategic because Lagos State is the commercial nerves of uh, Nigeria, whereby Oyo State, Ibadan, is the, is the transit point that link both the west and the north together. And the two are the area whereby the ongoing railway, Lagos, Ibadan, uh, Kano, and the, those, uh, the research instrument, the technique, and the, and the data analysis that were used. And during my field of study, these are the current, these are the existing uh, narrow gauge, and those are the ongoing work that has been done in the border. This is the, the situation of the thing. And these are the local workshop that they have here in, in, in Ibadan, and the train station there. Then most of the finding that was conducted from the Nigerian Railway uh, official and the local community, uh, it was, uh, they make to know that it's a very good idea for the standard gauge in the country because they see it as something that is going to open up uh, the economy and linking uh, uh, all the other states. Then going further, they talk about the issue about the transfer of technology. They, they believe that there is a lead to the difficulty of transferring the ski to the Nigerian local personnel. And then the other one was talking about that the, 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 the labor practice of the Chinese was not well considered to the local uh, people. And they, they, they see it like if they did not integrate them, how are they going to maintain? How are they going to participate in making sure they sustain this, this project? Then going forward, they talk about the extent of problem, the, 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 the challenges that uh, may point of uh, conflict that may come there. And instead, in the West, there, are, there was no security threat in the North, in the West, but in the North, maybe because of the uh, Boko Haram or, or the other. Then this one, they said most of our children, in their, they, they were not given consideration. And they believe that since they are not being integrated, it may generate a lot of conflict in the, in the, in the community. Then, then concerning the policy intent, they talk about the National Assembly, that there is an act that's still empowering the Nigerian railway company that will not allow him to uh, uh, part, uh, private partners, indigenous people to, indigenous partnership to really come in on board the uh, railway. Then the, the other finding. Then in, order, then in conclusion, uh, in conclusion, I, I will conclude that the, uh, the Chinese intervention in African railway subsector in Nigeria is very timely, it's very good, it's a welcome idea, as because this sector has been moribund for, for more than three decades. And effort by the, 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 the successful government to revive this, uh, this railway has not see the light of the day as a result of underfunding, poor, poor execution, misappropriation of fund in the subsector. Then I, now be, I believe that the skill and the technique employed by the Chinese in the railway project implementation should facilitate inclusive growth in, in the railway subsector through interlinking of the country community and that the Sino Nigeria partnership in the transport sector subsector will be viable if it enables sustainable local capacity building, indigenization, and eventual ownership of the railway transformation plan in Nigeria. Then importantly, there is need for the local personnel to be exposed to the skills used by the Chinese to aid the sustainability of this project. 
ranging from how to drive. Because I was in Abuja, the light train, I discovered that Nigerians cannot even drive the train. It's been still being done by the Chinese. They don't know more about it. Like during my field work, the, the, the technician, the, 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 the engineers, they make me to understand that they lack the, uh, the, the, the enabled capacity to know about, to, to work on this train because they were not ready to show them that. They don't know the agreement the Nigerian government really make with the Chinese. And then also, it, it, it's maintained I are now to use local made material and a component for future construction and its management. Then it can be, it can be inferred that the sustainable part of the single Nigerian railway transport subsector could be, remain a mileage if urgent policy or measure is not put in place by the Nigerian government in ensuring that the infrastructure is managed by the indigenous personnel. And this, if it's not adequately managed very well, since the, the Chinese are not willing to expose it, the, the knowledge that is ingrained in this project, then it may result in capital flight. And going to uh, my recommendation, I talk about the skill transfer to indigenous personnel by encouraging local mechanical production of material needed for such projects because the Ajakuta steel project in Nigeria is being just left there without even being constructed. Most of the uh, 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 the, the, the thing that's being used for the project was, br was brought in from China instead of being sourced in, in, from Nigeria. And also that exploration of Itape, Iron Ore, and Ajakuta rolling, still rolling toward is used in the construction of the other rail line because they are still, they are just on the Lagos, Ibadan to Kano at the moment. But there is still Lagos Calabar coastal line, which they've not started, and they are trying to work on a kind of portal called Maduguri also. So all these things is something that they could make use of. Then the other one is integration of the local community leader in the, into the railway decision making. Most of the interviewing with all these uh, community leaders that I make make me to understand that land technically under the Nigerian constitution is owned by government. But practically, the land is owned by them. That if government is, because there is no how this train will not pass through their line and their community, and they need to carry them along. And some of it, they were not ready to show, to let them be into it. They are just doing it just for political reason that they do something and so that people will hear them that they do, but they are not considering the long-term effect of all this project. Then lastly, then the concentration of employment opportunity for the member of the old community to avoid conflict of interest among the unemployed youth in the area. And lastly, the most, one of the most important thing is to onboard the Nigerian Railway Corporation into various agencies because the agency has been just been there and a lot of uh, corruption cases, misappropriation, and a lot of backlog of payment for pension that range for close to almost three years that have not been paid. And all these things will not make a, a, most of the personnel to work effectively on this new one. So by, by, by investing in the local uh, partnership, we'll make this thing to be sustainable. So thank you for listening.